Hey everyone, Alex with BC Adventure. Today we're going to be looking at installing a Minecraft server using Unrate. It's really simple and I'm going to walk you through all the steps needed to do it, including publishing it on the internet so that your friends and family outside of the house can join your world. Let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is get logged into our Unraid server and we're going to head on over to the applications. And we're going to search for Minecraft. And as we can see, there's all the different mods that we can install, but we're going to go down to the Binhex Minecraft server. Uh, this is for the PC version. If you want to do a, uh, a Bedrock instance, you can do the uh, Bedrock installation. Both are exactly the same. So we're going to go to Actions, and we're going to do Install. So here we're presented with the uh, infamous uh, app installer. Now, totally up to you on what you want to do here. If you want to change the uh, default port for the server, uh, leave the web interface since that's not going to be web accessible if you're putting this on the internet. Um, it is good practice to change the port. Uh, however, I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, here we can set the backup intervals for hours and days. Oh, sorry, this is for purging the backup, uh, the amount of backup days. And then we're going to go down here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to change the web user. So we're going to change that to whatever you desire. And then we need to set a web password. And I do suggest using a strong password for this. Okay, so we're going to leave the uh, console title alone and we'll leave that alone. And then here, depending on how much RAM you have and how many users you want to have connected, um, you can make this a little bit more robust. So I'm going to start off with one gig of RAM because I have 112 gigs of RAM in my server. And I'm going to update this to 4096. So rule of thumb is one gig of RAM for every 20 users you uh, would like to have connected to your server. So because I'm going to publish this on the internet and make it accessible to all my wonderful uh, viewers, uh, I'm going to make it uh, good for 80 users. Uh, here we're going to set the threads. So depending on how many threads you have available on your uh, CPU, uh, you may want to be a little conservative with it. So I'm, I've got a 40 uh, thread CPU, so I'm going to set this to 20. And then here we can set some Java custom arguments or uh, some startup commands. And uh, if you are using your Unraid for a VPN uh, or VPN server, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and select that to yes. And what that does is when the VPN server shuts down, the, uh, the Minecraft server will shut down as well. So now that we've got all this set, we're going to go ahead, just confirm everything. And then we're just going to go to apply and not now. So we'll go ahead and wait for this to finish getting installed. All right, so now that's gone ahead and finished. Click done. And then we'll close this and we'll head on over to Docker. And then we're just going to open the web UI. And here we see it is preparing the server, getting it started and uh, downloading the world and uh, getting everything up and running. All right, so that's it. This server is now up and running. Uh, however, it is good practice to, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna restart this server. And 
we'll just give it a refresh. Here we see it starting up. All right, so it's good to go. Now, I made a little checklist. I'll just bring it up here. And this is what we need to do to get everything up and running, including getting it on the internet. So we've downloaded the correct software or the, the correct version for our use case. We have verified the settings before deployment. And next thing we need to do is we need to edit the server properties. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our app data folder. And this is located on our Unraid server. We're going to find Binhex Minecraft server. We're going to open Minecraft and then we're going to select server properties. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to open with our editor. So here we've got all these settings that we can change. So what I'm going to look for first off is the max players, which is right here. And I'm going to change that to 80. And the next thing I want to do is change the message that appears when you join the server. Thank you for joining BC Adventure. Okay. All right. That's all we need to do for this. So we're going to go ahead and save. And then we're going to exit. So that's it. That's now been updated. So what we need to do is we need to restart our server once more. Get this, uh, browser back up. We'll go back over to Docker and we're just going to go restart. Give a refresh. And we'll wait for this to come back online again. All right, so that's getting going. All right, good to go. Okay, so if we come back over here, we can see that we are using uh, gig of RAM so far, and it's uh, using very minimal CPU. All right, so next thing we wanna do is get this server online. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll close out of there. So first thing we need to do is we need to port forward from our router. So what we need to do is we need to take note of the Minecraft server port, which is 25565. So we're going to head on over to our router and we're going to set up a port forward for this. And this is uh, obviously going to look different for you depending on the brand of router that you have. So I'm going to go over to settings and routing and then port forward and I'm going to create an entry. I'm going to name this Minecraft server. And here is the IP address of my Unraid server. Oh, my bad. That's the port, 25565. I'm just going to update that. Forward IP is the IP address of my server, and that is correct. And I want to make sure that it is TCP and UDP. And then I'm going to add entry. And that's what we need to do on our router side. The next thing that we're going to need to do is um, we're going to have to, uh, to, well, first off, to make this accessible from the internet, we're going to have to have a domain name, which I already have. Um, and you can get a free one from a company called Freenom. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the video description uh, so that you can access a free domain if you like. 
the only thing you need to do is just renew it every month or three months. I forget how um, what their threshold is, but uh, you do have to frequently renew it, and that's the only downside. But uh, you get a uh, a full uh, a full domain and uh, a control panel for that domain, which allows you to make subdomains and records and all that fun stuff. So. That's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna hop on over to my cPanel for my domain and I'm gonna head on over to the zone editor. So the first thing I need to do is create a subdomain. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to create an A record. So I'm just gonna call mine Minecraft and uh, I have to use my domain. And then here I'm gonna post my, oh, sorry. I just have to do Minecraft and it will actually append it for me. And then here uh, is where I need to put in my uh, router's IP address, my public IP address. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I've gone ahead and done that. Now, the next thing we need to do is pretty important. So our users who want to access our Minecraft server don't have to do the semicolon and put the port number in. It's just gonna be minecraft.familyio.ca. So the way we're gonna do that is by adding a service record. And what a service record does is it tells the domain or the, the, the computer who's trying to access the domain, uh, what port to forward the service to. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to add a SRV record. So here we need to put in, uh, and each domain uh, service provider will do this a little differently. Some may use the same cPanel, but mine wants me to put in the subdomain that I created. And I'm just gonna lowercase that because I'm finicky. And then here is our priority. So this is uh, the, uh, the priority our uh, DNS is gonna give to this domain. So we're gonna hit that, we're, sorry, we're gonna make that a zero. Our weight, um, be honest with you, I don't fully understand what that is, but the default is five. The port is going to be the port of the Minecraft server that we made. So we know that's 25565. And our target is going to be our subdomain. So minecraft.familyio.ca. And that's, that's all we need to do. And then from there, we're going to click Save Record. So now that's been added to our DNS records for our domain. So it may take a few minutes for this to propagate with the DNS servers that uh, my web host uses. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll give this a, uh, a few minutes to propagate and uh, start recognizing that uh, minecraft.familyio.ca points to my Unraid server. So we'll go ahead and give this a few minutes. All right, so I went ahead and gave it a test and uh, realized that I made a spelling error when I changed the network message. I made it, thank you for doing BC Adventure. Stop that, it makes no sense. So I actually went ahead and updated it. So we'll go ahead and get server status again. Thank you for joining BC Adventure. So as we can see, this was pretty simple to get set up. Um, I actually have never played Minecraft. Um, the reason that, uh, uh, what prompted me to make this video was I had a couple friends ask me if I could put something together for them, uh, because the servers that their kids were joining, um, I guess weren't appropriate or, you know, their stuff was getting smashed or something. I don't know the whole logistics around it, but, um, at the end of the day, they, they asked for a safer environment that could be monitored. Uh, so I went ahead and did that. And um, yeah, so I figured why not do a t tutorial on it. And uh, uh, the server that uh, I've just created, I'm actually going to leave open for the community. So please feel free to use it. Um, 
it's uh, no sweat off my back. I actually tend to leave the applications open to the community that I set up for, for my tutorials so that you can uh, get a feel for them, uh, use them, uh, know what the experience is going to be like. And uh, it just gives you an opportunity to play around with it before installing it or uh, maybe jumping into a project you're unsure of. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, actually, you know what? We'll go back to our little notepad here. Um, so we confirmed the server is online and uh, edited the properties. Uh, we set up our port forwarding, we set up our domain, and we set up or we confirmed our server is accessible over the internet. Um, so that's six steps and it was pretty simple. Uh, took um, roughly 20, 25 minutes to get set up. Um, obviously I've cut this video down so that you don't have to sit and wait through all the stuff uh, that I had to to get this set up, but uh, realistically, half an hour, you're going to be up and running. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comments section. I'm usually pretty quick to reply and I love all the positive and negative feedback. So please don't be shy to comment. Uh, give a like, uh, subscribe if you found this useful. And uh, maybe, the, maybe if I do another video, I'll look at adding mods. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will catch you in the next one.